What's up guys, Sila here and I am back with another video and this time we're going to be taking a look at how you get the Iron Hoof Destroyer from Black Hand in Black Rock Foundry Mythic Difficulty. We're going to be running through each of the bosses and we'll eventually get to Black Hand where we'll have around a 1-3% to chance of the mount dropping. Now it's not confirmed exactly what the percent is because it used to be 100% so it does skew with the data but it's going to be around that 1-3% to mark. Now solo in this place is going to be no easy task at all, I would recommend bringing a class or spec that has pretty good burst damage, good sustain healing too, or something that can just kind of soak those hits and heal itself back up, so something like a blood DK is going to be pretty good, enhanced shaman is going to be fine here, things like that are going to work quite well. Now that isn't saying you need to be those specific things to be able to solo this place, but it is going to make it a lot easier for you, and your eye level is going to impact this too. I'm sitting at about 960 eye level, and I still die a couple of times, so do keep that in mind, this isn't going to be easy at all. If you are struggling, bring in a friend or two, for get solo on it for now and if you clear through this place for five weeks you'll get a quest week one and then four weeks later you'll finish that quest which will let you skip straight to black hand so then you're gonna be able to start solo in black hand mythic solo you should be able to do that a lot easier because some of the other bosses are honestly a bit harder than black hand so you should be fine there. The first target on our list is going to be Grull, and this is one of the harder fights in here. It's not easy at all. He's going to be doing a lot of damage to you, so you even need to be able to kill him as quickly as possible before he kills you. Or you need to play something that can kind of sustain through the damage and slowly whittle him down that way. So the dangerous part of this fight is going to be Infernal Slice. He's going to keep doing it, he's going to slice away, and it keeps stacking up this debuff. And each time he does it, he's going to be doing more and more damage to you. So definitely save defensive CDs for later on in the fight, just so you can survive the later stacks of Infernal Slice. He's going to do Cave In, which will cause debris to fall from the ceiling, move out of those. He's going to have these like or uh, fire orbs rolling around the room, try and avoid those. And eventually, if you get to phase two, he's going to do the knock up petrify thing, which you're going to want to have a CD for as well, because you're going to take a lot of damage during that. But realistically, I'd bring drums, potions, flasks, and just try and burst this guy down as quickly as possible. It's going to be your best bet to kill him. Next on our list is Orgorger, and if you've just killed Grill, you're probably going to have a pretty easy time with this guy. He's not too difficult, two phases. In phase one, he's going to have this interruptible cast, a Blackrock Barrage. You just want to interrupt that as much as possible but it doesn't really matter if you don't he's going to put down these acid pools move out of those he's going to put down these explosive shards as well move away from those because after a short period they'll explode and stun you you don't really want to do that but it isn't the end of the world if you do get stunned too i think i even end up being stunned if he reaches down to zero energy which probably won't happen but if it does he'll move into phase two he'll roll around the room you just want to kind of dodge his rolling paths kill the crates until he's eaten enough of the ore that comes out of the crates and then he'll go back to phase one and it's rinse and repeat but as i said i really don't see you having that little damage that you won't be able to kill it in phase one but maybe and just in case you now know how to do phase two and that is all gorgeous easy peas now we're on to Blast Furnace, and until recently this was an extremely difficult fight to solo. The main reason being there was a mechanic where you had to mind control a mob to remove a buff that reduced damage taken by 99%. So without having a mind control you would have to kill the mob through the 99% damage reduction before the boss enrages and kills you. Pretty difficult, so now that that mechanic is gone, this makes this fight a lot easier to solo and most should now be able to do it. So phase one, you're going to have a lot of mobs in the room, I would recommend killing those out. You're going to have these two vents on either side, and your goal is to use the bombs that are given to you by the engineers to blow up the vents. So you want to get a bomb, click the action button on the vent, or click, like when you stood next to the vent, and that will cause the bomb to explode. The engineers will also drop a bag of bombs, so I'd recommend killing the engineers as close to the vent as possible. Then you can click the bag, click the button, click the bag, click the button, rinse and repeat. And you will want to kill the engineers off as quickly as possible too, as they will start to repair the furnace, which you don't want. So you do want to kind of switch between the left and right side of the room, progressively clearing out the mobs, and using the bombs on the furnace, or on the, the vents. In phase 2 you're going to have these 4 elementalists around the room and these slags that will spawn, you want to kill the slags on top of the elementalist, that will remove their damage taken buff and you'll be able to kill them pretty quickly. Repeat that 4 times and you'll be moving into phase 3. There are going to be these guards that spawn during phase 1 and 2 as well and they will drop this pearl pearl swirly thing which you can see right there. That makes anything inside it take less damage, it's going to make things just take longer to die, it isn't going to be too difficult. 
but I would just recommend moving out of it because you're going to slow things down. Then in phase three, it's a simple case of just move out of things that look bad, generally things that are hot, and keep kiting the boss around the room until it's dead. That should be the easiest of the phases, honestly. Phase one's probably going to be where you take the most damage. And with that done, that is the blast furnace down. Heading into the Iron Assembly next, and the first boss we're going to come across here is Beast Lord Darmac. Now, if you've killed the previous bosses, you should have no issue here whatsoever. It should be really easy for you. So coming into the fight, I'd recommend you just pop all your DPS cooldowns and do as much damage to him as possible. He's going to gain mechanics as you go through the fight, but most of them are really trivial. Not really things that you need to worry about. Like if something looks dangerous, just move out of it. And realistically, it won't do enough damage to kill you, even if you do take a few ticks from it anyway. They're, they're all minor mechanics that, you know, just do a bit of damage. Once adds come out, cleave those down, you should be fine. And when he dismounts off one of his beasts, just focus him and cleave the beast down and you should be fine there too. Now, the only real threatening mechanic in this fight is pin down. He'll throw his heavy spear, he'll have swirls on the ground that you need to move out of. If you do get hit, you'll be pinned to the floor, stunned, and able to do anything. So you do need to avoid this spear. You might be able to use a pet or something to kill the spear, but instead of coming up with a crazy mechanic or way of dealing with the mechanic, it's better to just simply walk out of it and then you don't have to deal with it whatsoever. Very, very easy. You have plenty of time to do so. So just DPS him down. He'll jump on a beast, kill the beast, go back to killing him, and you should be able to kill him quick enough that he doesn't actually go through all of his beasts anyway. So the fight should be really easy. Next in the Iron Assembly is Operator Thogar, and this is a reasonably easy fight. It's just a case of judging the trains as they come and cleaving down the adds when they spawn too. You don't want to get overwhelmed by the adds, and you want to avoid as many of the trains as possible because they do still deal quite a lot of damage. So you can tell when a train's about to come as one of these doors will open, and sometimes it can be one of these slow-moving mechanic-based trains, or other times it'll be one of these fast passing trains that's going to knock you back, do quite a lot of damage, and it's just not a situation you want to be in. So do keep an eye on the doors that open, and if you are struggling by getting hit by the trains, there is a certain set pattern to the train order. There are some random aspects to it, but for the most part there is a pattern that you can follow to avoid the trains as much as possible, and with that, as long as you're cleaving down the ads, you shouldn't have any issues with this fight whatsoever. The Iron Maidens are the next target, and this is quite a difficult fight. You're going to want to pop all your cooldowns in the beginning and pick one of them and do as much damage as possible. Now, doing a little bit of cleave is fine, but for the most part, you should be focused on single target. And there's two kind of goals here. One is to kill one of them as quickly as possible, making it so there's a bunch of less mechanics for you to deal with. The other goal is to push one fast enough that the whole fight transitions and you don't have to deal with the bolt mechanic whatsoever. So you take out a whole mechanic of the fight, which makes things a lot easier so that's the the two main goals here if you're struggling to achieve that you know use potions flasks drums whatever it is you can do just to increase your damage now you're not going to need an insane amount of damage to achieve this but if you are struggling for whatever reason then use those things just to bump up your damage a little bit more now which one you choose to focus is up to you i went for maraca because i felt like she was doing the most damage to me but i think the admiral is a good option as well as that's also going to be doing the rapid fire, which you need to run away from, the piercing shot or penetration shot later on in the fight, which does about a million damage, and then she's going to put the, down those turrets too, which it hurt if you get hit by them. So there are quite a few mechanics that are quite dangerous, but it's up to you. Just killing one of them off either way is going to make the fight significantly easier. You are going to need some good sustain here, as you're going to take quite a lot of damage. I even use healing rain quite often, just to keep myself nice and healthy. And you're not going to want to get hit by those tornadoes either after one of them does the blade dash. It'll leave a tornado. If you get hit by the tornado, you're stunned for like three seconds, and that's quite deadly. So definitely avoid that, especially if rapid fires happening at the same time. You're just going to be taking a crap ton of damage there. So don't get hit by the tornadoes. Move out of obviously the, the purple bluey looking pools. And you should be okay. The rest of the mechanics you can't really dodge or do too much about. Just going to hit you. So, you know, use defensives when needs be. If you get like the... um convulsive shadows you know you might need a cd there too but it doesn't hit that hard and then the fight is dead so hopefully if you're able to kill one of them quick enough it should be fine now if you find that you know killing maraca isn't working for you and it ends up being admiral or even the other one that's doing the most damage then switch it up it doesn't really matter which one you kill just kill the one that you're having the most issue with so now that this boss is dead we're not actually going to skip to the next boss just yet but what we're going to do is head over to this corner here and we're going to navigate all the way through these crates. And right at the back, there's going to be an NPC who will give us a quest. 
Now, if you remember early in the video, I was talking about a quest where if you clear this place five times, once when you've got the quest and then another four times after the quest, you'll be able to come in, hand this to, back to this guy, and you'll get a item that allows you to skip straight to Black Hand. So this is going to make farming this place so much easier because after the fifth week, you're not going to have to do any of this stuff anymore. You're going to be able to go straight to Black Hand, just farm one boss each week, and you know it's going to cut down a lot of that time that's kind of you know, wasting your time. So if you're in here with a group, do that, get that, and then you could probably go and solo Black Hand. Hands and friends are the next target on our list, and this is a really simple fight, except for one thing. It is super bugger. Chances are when you do this fight, you're going to have a few times where they both just despawn. You'll have to do the whole fight again. And even if you do manage to kill the fight, you'll probably only get half of the loot. It is really weird, but pull them both, cleave them down as they have a shared HP pool. So cleave is completely okay here. Eventually, one of them is going to jump away and you'll be left with one. And then there'll be these kind of molten pop tarts that'll come down the conveyor belts. You can tell where they're going to be by the flame at the end, as you can see on the left and right. That means there's going to be one there, so you know, try and get out of that lane. Also, some panels on the conveyor belt will light up. That means the stamp's going to come down and do some damage, so you're trying to avoid those. A little bit later in the, the fight as well, when you walk on a certain section of the conveyor belt, it'll light up and it'll mean the stamp's going to come down there. So you want to kind of slowly work your way around the room, but it shouldn't be that bad. Now, there is a point where it bugs and he's going to jump off. You'll be left on your own and they'll both be kind of like stood on top of each other. Now, I've found the best way of stopping this from bugging it is basically running yourself over to the right side of the room where they're both stood and just trying to do a bit of range damage to both of them to, you know, kind of keep them in combat in a sense. And normally that works most of the time to stop them from bugging out. He'll jump down again and you'll be able to continue with the fight, but it isn't always guaranteed to work. It's just a very strange fight. So it's a simple case of just dodging the conveyor belt uh, stamps and dodging the molten pop tarts and you should be a-okay. As long as they don't despawn, that's the most difficult part of the fight. The next boss in this section is Flamebender Kagraz, and this is a relatively difficult fight if your DPS is lower. So starting out, I'd recommend killing off Aknor as quickly as possible. We don't need him there, just extra mechanics. Next up, she's going to do this Enchanted Armament. It'll be a spinning blade. Just move away from that. It's going to do extra damage to you. Next up, she'll do these Lava Slashes. It'll be like a, la a lava line. Move away from those, you know, avoid the damage. And then the final mechanic that we can deal with is the summon cinder wolves. There's going to be two wolves that you need to kill within eight seconds of each other. So just cleave those down as quickly as possible. Everything else is pretty unavoidable, and it's just a case of killing the boss before these mechanics ramp up too high and you die. So you want to save defensives for later on, and you just want to be pumping out as much damage as you can while dealing with those mechanics that I mentioned earlier. The final fight in this section is Chromug, and if you've killed everything else to this point, you shouldn't really have too much issue with this fight. Now the first mechanic you need to worry about is reverberations. There'll be kind of yellow discs that will go outwards. Just move out of the way of those. Next is Rune of Crushing Earth. There'll be like a red rune on the ground. Two hands will spawn and if you stand in the red rune the hand will collapse and do damage to you. A bit later into the fight he'll do thundering blows and there'll be these runes of grasping earth. If you run over and stand in one they'll grab hold of you and that'll make it so you don't take the damage from the knock up from thundering blows. So I'd recommend doing that reduce the damage that could possibly kill you, and then once he's finished doing thunder and blows, just break yourself out. A little bit after that, he'll do Rune of Trembling Earth. Now, I don't make it that far, but it's a semi-dangerous mechanic. He'll summon three spike pillars or stone pillars. You can DPS those down if you want to. It'll help reduce the damage that you're going to take. And then when he's about to do the call of the mountain, you can stand behind one of the, the broken stone pillars and you'll negate the damage from that mechanic. Although with the health pool that you have, you might not even need to de uh, deal with the stone pillars and you might not need to stand behind them for the call of the mountain. If you do end up dying to it and you don't you know, stand behind it and deal with them, then now you know that you can deal with them and reduce the damage there. But as I said, realistically, with the health pool that you have there, you shouldn't need to, and chances are you'll kill the boss before you even really see those mechanics anyway, because it is quite far into the fight, it's like three or four minutes. So next up we're going to head our way to Black Hand for the final encounter. The final fight in here, and the one that's going to give us that mount, is Black Hand himself, and of course this is one of the more difficult fights in here. So phase one, he's going to have three phases total. Phase one, you're going to have this room that's progressively filling up with lava. You're going to be smashed across the room at certain points as well, so you want to try and be on one end of the room. You're also going to have these circles that will come underneath you that you want to move out of, and these mines that you want to move away from, don't walk through those. At a later point in the fight, he'll summon these kind of like 
debris piles that you could run and hide behind for the mark of death too but we don't make it that far because i use all my cooldowns in the beginning because i'm quite confident but i would recommend using your defense air so your cooldowns not your defensives in phase two as this is probably the more difficult phase phase one isn't too bad you have plenty of time to deal with the stuff that's there so phase two you're going to be knocked back every once in a while so you want to have your back either towards the gate like i do or you can stand underneath this balcony also moving yourself out of the fire and then also when the siege engine of progressively makes its way towards you put some dots on it if you can aoe it down just get rid of it because it's going to start knocking you around and be annoying now you could also use that for the mark of death as well you can hide behind it and use that to soak the mark but you shouldn't really need to the, the cannon should die pretty quickly eventually you're going to make it into phase three and you want to be in a position where he's not going to knock you off the platform when he knocks you back. If you have something where you can jump to him like Transcendence or Charge or something to get back, that'd work great too. But if not, then you're just going to have to simply run to him. Like I'm using Healing Rain instead of Lunge here, so that would have been more helpful. Realistically, you want to have these kind of molten piles near each other so that when they explode, you've got more space on the platform. But if not, that's not too big of a problem e either because solo, you shouldn't really need that much space. Just make sure you're trying to keep them as clumped up as possible and don't stand in them because they do damage too and then obviously when they explode move outside of the circles and you should be fine. But just make sure you're always in a position where you're not going to be knocked off the platform. That's probably the most important part of the fight. And there you go, you've killed it and you've got a chance at getting that Iron Hoof Destroyer. So good luck, hopefully this video helped you out and look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching guys, see ya!